All right. Welcome, everyone. I'm going to, my name is Andy. I'm with the city of Cyprus, and I'm going to let uh, Simi and La Palma take it away. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Simi. I'm with the city of La Palma. Um, I have Lauren here and Josh here. We're kind of sharing the camera right now, but pretty soon you'll get just Lauren time and just Josh time and I'll be out of the way. Uh, but I'd like to welcome you guys to our virtual team job workshop. Uh, thank you guys for taking time out of your day to join us. Um, and today our presentation outline, we'll be going over Zoom etiquette. Then Lauren will take it away with job searching. Uh, Cameron with the city of Cyprus will be talking about volunteer and networking tips. And Josh will close it out. And he'll be talking to us about how to get and keep your job. Um, and then really quickly, just a few Zoom etiquette rules. I'm sure you guys all are aware and know uh, through what you use at school. So just be sure to be aware of your surroundings. Uh, make sure you have an appropriate screen name, which you guys all do. Uh, if you're not going to be talking, just go ahead and mute yourself so we don't overlap. We don't hear anything crazy in the background. Um, speaking of craziness in the background, just a heads up, we're in our park office. So a lot of patrons, they come to our window. So if someone's like knocking or, you know, they try to pay for something or ask us questions, I apologize in advance. Um, also, if you're using a background, which none of, none of you are, Make sure it's appropriate. You don't want to do something crazy in the background. Our background is just like park office. Uh, just be sure to be respectful to all presenters and other participants. If we're boring, don't tell us. It's kind of mean, you know. Uh, and then also, some of you guys aren't able to use your mic, so use utilize the chat box for questions or anything that comes to mind. And again, just make sure to keep it appropriate. All right, Andy, do you have anything that you would like to add? No, I think um, that's about it for Zoom etiquette. Other than if possible, please uh, do keep your camera on. We'd love to see your faces. Um, and there will be times for questions. Um, and like Simi said, you can utilize the chat box for that. Or um, there, if you prefer or are able to, you can also ask your question um, verbally and unmute yourself. Um, and it'll just be during that time for questions um, and at the end of the event as well. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Lauren. Good idea to the arrows. Yeah, the arrows are great. Hi guys, my name is Lauren. Um, I currently work as a senior recreation leader for the city of La Palma, as well as a community service leader with the city of Lakewood. Um, I got my degree in environmental science from Long Beach State, and today I will be talking about the job search. So things you wanna think about before you start your search. Sorry guys. Um, you wanna think about your schedule and what other commitments you may have. Um, you guys are all in school and so you want that to be your first priority and make sure that you aren't working a job that is going to cut into that school schedule. Um, another thing to think about is your transportation. Um, if you guys do not drive yet um, and you don't have a car, you want to make sure that you have a parent or a sibling that can drive you or that your job is close enough that you are going to be able to walk or ride your bike there um, every time that you're scheduled. You also want to think about your interests. Some ideas are if you like clothing, you might want to work in retail. Um, if you're on the swim team at your school, for example, you might want to be a lifeguard during the summer. Um, you also want to think about who you know. I know one of my first jobs was because my aunt was a business manager at a surgery center, and so I was able to help her out, um, but she only offered me that job because I let her know that I was interested in working. So for getting started, 
um, on your job search, you wanna make sure that you're thinking about all of your experience, all of your extracurriculars, as well as your skills. You wanna write those things down um, and you wanna really think about what you like to do. Um, and then you also wanna create your schedule that you are available. Oh, Lord. So we're having some technical difficulties. We can stop the share. Yeah. Yeah, try it one more time. Did they not see any of that? Yeah, they just saw the first one. Go to the second screen. Is the screen moving, you guys? No? Oh. <laughs> it says unable to load file. What? Yeah, we see a screen that has your slides in the background and it says unable to load file. One more, or just not share the screen and just uh, okay. present it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well. Can I see? Or Simi, if you want to use the screen that you showed me earlier. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> we all know Zoom and it is not showing. Yeah, technical difficulties. The 2020, 2021 slow. Is that one better? Try clicking on another slide. I think we'll just need to click through it that way. Okay. So don't present it? Yeah, just do it that way. Sorry about that, guys. All right, Lauren, take two. Okay. So <laughs> back to, I mean, you guys heard what I said for things to think about, but if you guys want to see the slide, it's there. Um, and then getting started again, you want to compile all of your experience, all of your skills, um, any extracurricular activities that you do, as well as create your availability schedule. Um, and then you want to find a resume template and you want to put all of that in there. If there's a ton to choose from, um, from Word, there's a bunch just online. If you do a quick Google search and find one, that fits um, your liking and um, fits with all the stuff that you have to put into it. And then for where to search, um, there are job search engines such as Snagajob, Indeed, and in government jobs. Snagajob and Indeed are more likely to have more part-time work. Um, you could also go directly to a store's website if you know that you're interested in working at a certain store. And again, asking family um, can always help, even if you want to babysit or tutor, um, it can start with who you know already. And then for the application, um, this is going to be separate from your resume and almost every single job that you apply for is going to have an application. Um, and it's gonna have the basics with your name, address and contact information. You also wanna make sure that you're reading the job description or job flyer very thoroughly because a lot of times they'll tell you what they're looking for and you can really tailor your resume to the job flyer. Um, and again, compiling all of your experience and skills, like I said earlier, will help you um, during this, as well as when you're answering questions, if they ask you any questions. Um, again, um, you really want to make sure that you're checking your spelling and grammar. If you have any errors, they might throw out your application before they even contact you. For your resume, um, an example is going to be on this screen. You want your name and contact information to be the first thing that the potential employer sees. And for you guys, um, your education will likely come next because that is the main 
thing you guys are focused on at the moment. And then you can also include any volunteer work you have, any sports you're involved in or clubs, any skills. Again, you wanna gear this towards the job itself. So if you're applying for a cashier position, you wanna talk about maybe the math classes that you've taken, um, as well as your customer service skills that you may have. Again, check your spelling and grammar. This is very important. And then some things to remember as you're searching for jobs and going through the process, you do wanna to apply to multiple places. Um, you won't always hear back from every single employer that you apply to and send a resume to. Make sure you're asking for help, whether that be from parents or siblings, um, even teachers, if you have a good relationship with your teachers. You don't wanna get discouraged. Like I said, you might not always hear back from everywhere you apply to, but don't let that discourage you from continuing to search. Um, you also, if you don't hear back, you may wanna follow up. Um, so if you can find a number and a name of the supervisor or manager, and um, just let them know your name and that you applied and you're looking to hear back about the status of your application. That's a good way for them to get to look at your application. Um, you also wanna prepare for your interview if you do get an interview, um, which I believe someone will be talking about shortly and you wanna stay organized. Um, write down all the places you've applied to, that way you're not Continue applying to the same place um, and stay organized with all of your information too, as far as extracurricular activities and your skills. And if you guys had any other questions as far as the job search goes, um, I could answer those. Uh, Lauren, I have a question. Yes, John. <laughs> uh, so what do you say if you have a busy schedule? Do you lie about your availability or do you honestly say what you have? I would be very honest about your availability. You don't want to lie because they're going to find out. Um, it is important that you aren't picking up a job that is going to take too much of your time. Um, so if you are really busy, maybe a good option is to look for seasonal positions or summer jobs. Um, that way your availability is more open during those times. Everyone, if you have any questions for Lauren, um, feel free to either raise your hand and unmute yourself, or we'll call upon you to unmute yourself, or um, please feel free to add that into the chat. Any questions at all on the topic of job searching? Okay, I think, thank you, Josh, for your question. And Lauren, thank you so much for your presentation. That was, um, that was great. Some really good tips in there. Um, something that stood out to me is definitely your uh, writing of a um, application. It is true that if you, you know, your grammar, your punctuation, if you start every sentence with a lowercase letter, that is something that I see right away. And it's something that I can tell that somebody filled out their application using maybe a cell phone or a tablet and didn't take the time to really make sure that each sentence is um, thoroughly thought about and you're, I'm, I even received applications with our first and last name, they use all lowercase letters. And it just, to me, shows that you were rushed and didn't take the time. And are you going to take the time to ensure that you follow all the steps that we require in our job? Maybe not. So you're starting off on a bad foot right away if you don't fill out the application clearly. So good, good tip there <laughs> for sure. All right, thank you, Lauren. So I am gonna go ahead and um, turn it over to our next speaker, um, Cameron Worsham with the City of Cyprus. She will uh, take it away here. 
And again, um, listen clearly during the presentation. And if you have any questions at the end, um, there'll be opportunity for that um, at the end of that as well. All right, Cameron. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys. Let me know if you guys, when you guys can see it. Okay, we see your screen. See it? Okay, perfect. So I'll go ahead and get started. Um, so my presentation is gonna be on the importance of volunteering. So as Andy said, my name is Cameron Worsham and I'm 20 years old. So I was a teen last year, don't worry. <laughs> um, hopefully I can convince you guys that it is important too. So um, if you guys have any questions, just write them down and I'll answer them at the end. So a little bit about me. Um, I played softball my whole life. I started at Cypress Girls Softball League when I was four and I played all the way up until last year at Cypress College, here's my team. Um, from Kennedy High School, I graduated in 2018. Um, Along with volunteering, softball has taught me many great qualities. It taught me about friendship and it taught me to care about more people other than myself. So that obviously got me into volunteering. Um, so yeah, I graduated in 2018 and now I'm a junior in college. Um, so I think family should come first no matter what. I love my family. I think everyone does. Here's my mom, my brother my grandma, my nephew, my sister. I'm so grateful for all of these people because without them and without my family, I would not have had the support and I wouldn't have had the opportunities to volunteer. So be grateful for those who support you because some people never get the opportunities to volunteer. So here's my current job. I work for the city of Cyprus. I'm a recreation leader three. Um, I've been working here since 2016 and I love it. Um, I'm also the assistant day camp director in the summer. My job is really rewarding. You get to put smiles on so many kids' faces. You get to see happy parents. You get to go home knowing that you made people smile and that makes me smile. So by volunteering, I found, I found out that I loved working with kids and the public. I loved being active in my community. I loved being active through volunteering, so might as well have made money from it as well. So volunteering helps me get this job. So I love everything that, come, that comes with recreation. Take your passion and run with it. I play softball, I love going snowboarding. I figured that I should try to make money from being outside, so I did just that. So trust your instinct, trust your gut. Um, Take what you love and pursue it. So now I'm a student at Cal State Long Beach. I'm a junior. Um, I went to Cypress College and I graduated last semester. Um, my future, I think I'm going to graduate with a bachelor's degree in recreation. So hopefully one day I'll become a city manager, maybe even a city attorney if I decide to go to law school. So yeah, that's me. Now for the fun stuff, volunteering. <laughs> um, the picture on the left is me when I first started volunteering. I started in YAC, Youth Action Committee for the city of Cyprus and La Palma. Um, here's me and my best friend on the very left. We were working the La Palma dance and it was super fun. We got to see people our age, meet people a little older than us. We got to help with the snacks, everything. It was super fun. And you got to, it was for a good cause. You got to have fun and it was great. So then the middle picture was a Seal Beach cleanup that was also with Youth Action Committee, which was super fun. And then the picture on the right is me volunteering at my local church. It's really super rewarding. I've also, I was also a volunteer at the city of La Palma for two summers which I did 400 hours with total. And that led me into Youth Action Committee. So then I have also volunteered at uh, the Long Beach Veterans Hospital. 
Um, it got me, volunteering has got me to where I am today. It helped me give back, helped me make connections. It made me so many memories, so many friends, and it helped me figure out what I liked and what I didn't like. So skills I've gained from volunteering. I have learned how to be responsible. I've learned how to organize. I've learned how to be confident in myself and I've learned how to um, time management. That's huge. I was on three softball teams at one point, volunteering, school. It was a lot, but also it taught me how to network myself. I made, I've made a lot of professional connections. I've made, I've also gained a lot of interview skills. I had to interview to be in the youth action committee with the city of Cyprus and La Palma. And that helped me eventually sit in that same interview chair to get the job where I am today. So if I didn't have to interview for my youth action committee spot, then I don't even know if I would have got the job at the city of Cyprus. So it taught me so many skills. And I think you guys can, um, benefit from these skills as well if you volunteer. So volunteer at places that interest you. This is super important. If you, if you love books, volunteer at a library. If you like working with people and um, in the medical field, volunteer at a hospital. If you like, if you're really involved with your church, volunteer there. If you love swimming and aquatics, volunteer at the local pool. If you like kids, volunteer as a, as a coach. And same thing for recreation. If you like being active, volunteer at your local community center. Just take your interest and maybe try to see if it's something that you'd like to pursue. You'll figure out what you want to pursue and what you don't. This is great because you won't waste college money or time it'll guide you in your schooling I volunteered at the Long Beach Veterans Hospital as I mentioned and I thought I was I thought I wanted to go in the medical field I thought I wanted to be a nurse but I quickly realized that I cannot even see blood without getting crazy so that probably saved me a lot of a lot of time in college and money if I would have went into that so I'm super grateful for that experience So why should you guys volunteer? I think you guys should volunteer for many reasons, but I'm a little biased. So I think you guys should volunteer because you guys can make friends. I've made so many friends in volunteering and I saw people at school that I met through volunteering that I would have never said hi to or been friends with if I didn't meet them through volunteering. You can also make a difference in your community. This one's huge. Every community needs help from volunteers. Volunteers are way more appreciated than you can ever think. You can also learn life skills. This is great because everyone needs those life skills. You could, it's great for your resume. You could add those volunteer experiences on there. It's great for your college, college application. They love to see that as well. You should volunteer to get a job. You can make those professional connections. Um, I was volunteering and now Andy's my boss. So I was, I was volunteering for her and now she's my boss, just like that. <laughs> so it's more like, why shouldn't you volunteer? It has so many more amazing benefits than negatives. You get to give back to your community and that helps make so many connections. So why does volunteering even matter? You get to make professional connections again. You get to find out what you are interested in for your future career. Um, you get to know what you do not want to pursue in college. And this is huge because once again, you, don't, you do not want to be coming home from college and telling your parents that you do not like it at all because they will be very upset with you when you waste their money. It also looks great on resumes, college applications, Good to help out your community and so many more. It matters to the people you are volunteering for because oftentimes the cause is bigger than yourself. If you volunteer at a senior home and then you go home with a smile on your face, but that senior will talk about that for the rest of their week. So the cause is just bigger than yourself and it feels good to give back. I don't know. 
I can't move my slides. Oh, technical difficulty. Sorry, guys. Are you guys hearing that when I press it? It's like, no. I'm going to stop sharing really quick. Sorry. Yeah, um, try to redo. Yeah. Will it allow you to do it with your keyboard? I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to try that right now. Can you guys see? You see? OK, got it. I don't know why it froze. OK. OK. So sorry. No worries. Um, get yourself out there, guys. Put your name out there. Step out of your comfort zone. It'll be beneficial to you and the program and your community. Join more groups, be the solution, find your passion, and most importantly, have fun. Personal growth will only come if you push yourself to step out of your comfort zone. Participate. I know right now this, this is very challenging. Everyone's having a hard time with this, not just you, everyone. Right now it's been rough and I think everyone has gone through their own struggles. But be the positive light at the end of the tunnel. Join virtual clubs, join sports, join the student body, email your teachers, email your classmates, make connections. Your participation now will be remembered when COVID-19 is in the past. So right now we see your faces and when I see you in person maybe one day, I'll be like, wow, that was so nice of them for joining that virtual Teen night. It's like your participation now will mean so much when all of this is over because some people need need friends right now, even if we're all over like Zoom, it's okay. Participate. So here are some uh, volunteer opportunities that you guys might want to take a look at. So the city of Norwalk, they have a teen alliance program. It's virtual right now, but they're very active still. The city of Norwalk also has a public safety cadet program. If you guys are interested in the law enforcement, maybe seeing if you wanna go into that when you're older. Also um, the Youth Action, Action Committee, YAC, which I was a part of, you do 40 hours during the school year. It's, they're active right now. App applications will be available in May. And the CIT program for the city of Cyprus, the counselors in training, they might be able to be active this summer. They help with um, the counselors and things like that. So we're praying that the CITs will be up. And also the La Palma volunteers might be happening this summer. They're very, I did this as well. You get to help out the counselors um, at the day camp. Also, Seal Beach cleanups are still going on. The third Saturday of every month at River's End. If you guys want more information about this, I'll send you the link. Or so will Andy, any of us will be able to give you more information about these beach cleanups. And also, if you guys go to justserve.org, this site allows you to search for the volunteer opportunities in your area. So you could go to that site and say you want to volunteer in Orange County or LA County. It'll tell you all the volunteer opportunities that are near you. So after round, even if they're not advertising for volunteers, a lot of places would love to help, especially right now. A lot of places probably aren't allowed to advertise that they're looking for volunteers, but it doesn't hurt to ask. I bet a lot of, pe a lot of places would love to help right now. So with COVID-19 going on, there are not many opportunities, but there definitely still are some out there. So you just gotta look a little bit. So job searching, this is, Lauren talked about this a little bit. So if you volunteer, this, this part will be easy. Um, search for a job that will help you with the skills you need for your future career, even if it's a completely different field. So say you wanna go into the medical field, you have to start off slow, like you're not just gonna be a doctor right away. You could be a cashier and that'll help you talk to the public like you will have to do one day in your job every day. If you want to be a teacher, start small and work work with uh, be a coach or be 
make lattes and talk to the public, talk to people. Um, minimum wage jobs definitely shape you into a future professional. So you could do it. Make connections while volunteering and let them know that you'll be looking for a job in the near future. Or say, hey, I would really, I might want a job here in two years and they could might, they might be able to point you in a place that's looking for a job right then. So be confident. Time management. So this one is hard, but worth it. Stress, stress will help you prioritize and organize your life. So for me, a planner is a necessity. I like to check things off and I cannot stress to you enough how much a planner has helped me. I had so many things going on in high school and college. I was an athlete up until last semester when the pandemic happened. I had a job, I was volunteering, I was involved in my church, I was on multiple teams, I was babysitting. So mark off your prayer, makes you feel accomplished. Plan your week out because it put everything in my head on Monday, I will forget what I have to do by Friday. So plan it out, it'll make your stress go down because if I looked at everything I had to do for the week on Monday, it'd be way, way more overwhelming. Time management is so important, it's hard, but it's so worth it because at the end of the day, you feel so accomplished. The earlier that you learn this skill, the better foundation that you will have for your future. You'll be working for the rest of your life. So while you can, keep your life busy with sports, clubs, exercise, family, friends, volunteering, school, anything that makes you happy because the rest of your life, you'll be working every day and you'll be wishing you had the time to volunteer. So networking, this one's very important. People know people who know people who know people who know people. <laughs> Everyone talks. Word gets around super fast. Introduce yourself. Say hello. Be friendly. You don't know if the person sitting next to you is the CEO of a company that would love to have you. Be friendly. The worst someone can say to you is no. Go to events. Go to conferences. Pass out your resume. Be friendly, be confident, and don't be shy. It's not that hard. <laughs> For some people it is, but it's okay. Get out of your comfort zone. So teenagers are so important, guys. The opinions of teenagers matter more than you think. Your input and you volunteering go a long way to develop the city and to get more teens to participate. We want the teenagers to have a voice. Put yourself out there in order to be heard. Teenagers are the up and coming of the future. So you guys are the ones that start the trends and are the most in touch with technology. You guys are the gold of opinions in order to develop cities. So stand up and have a voice. Dream big, don't be afraid, it's okay. So now I just have some questions for you guys. Um, the first one is, have any of you ever volunteered in person? Anyone? You guys can use the, the raise your hand function or if any of you would like to answer verbally, you can do that as well. Um, I have. Myra has. Cool. Cool. Have any of you guys ever volunteered virtually? I haven't. That's is all new. <laughs> Hannah in the chat said that she volunteered at the Red Cross before. Cool. So what are your guys' interests? I'm curious to see if we can come up with places you could potentially volunteer based on your guys' interests. So me, I loved recreation. I volunteered at a summer camp that I went to when I was a kid. Does anyone want to share their interest? You can utilize the chat. Oh, softball, I see in the chat. Cool. You could volunteer as a, as a coach at your local league. Irini has volunteered at her church teaching dance. That's awesome. Use those skills. Volleyball, tumbling, good interests. 
Um, Myra has also volunteered at the library. Cool. Um, does anyone want to share like a volunteering story that has helped them succeed in school or sports? I know for me, I made um, connections at volunteering places. And then when I got to school, I wanted to be in ASD. And I just so happened to volunteer with the president of ASD. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. So volunteering helps in a bunch of crazy ways that no one even realizes. And does anyone want to share a fun or funny memory that they've made while volunteering? I, um, when I was a volunteer for Club La Palma, we would always have to make water balloons. And I was a little bit of a troublemaker. I would dump the water on everyone after they were all filled up, but I'll remember that forever. I was, you know, it's fun. Shane, uh, sorry, Hannah was able to learn first aid and CPR at Red Cross. That's awesome. Great. That's a good skill. I have to be certified in order to work my current job. So that's great. Jake, do you have any, I'm going to call you out because you know, <laughs> I know you at least, I feel like you have to have a fun uh, memory from volunteering. Um, I mean, like, I think just every event is a fun memory because like as the teens, we kind of get to participate in it, especially if it's like teen dances or um, sort of like these outdoor city events where there's like a lot of music and a lot of activities happening. So yeah, pretty much every experience in volunteering is valuable to me. So. Cool. And then does anyone have, oh, I have one more slide. So. Volunteer, volunteer and have fun while you're young because one day we'll be working full time and we're wishing we had time to volunteer and have fun while doing it. Our lives will be defined by what is etched into the lives of those we have touched. So does anyone have any questions for me? Please go ahead and put any questions on volunteering, volunteerism where you can volunteer yeah. into the chat. Myra, thank you for sharing um, that you were able to work with children during library activities. That is great. Gaining experience while volunteering. Awesome. Um, Andy, I actually, actually have a question for yeah. Um, I don't know if you mentioned it or not, but what was that, like that volunteer moment or that volunteer event that kind of made you say, I want to do recreation? Like, you know, I know it's an awesome job. I love it. You know, it's my job uh, as well. But what was like that moment for you where you're just like, you were sold on it? Um, I think it was when I was in Youth Action Committee. It was actually at the La Palma Halloween Carnival. And I was working in the maze and I was like, wow, this is so fun. And I was like, I would love to organize this. Like, this is so cool to see the community all come together in one place. And I was like, I wanna do this, it's super awesome. So that was my moment. Nice, nice. Thank you, Cameron. And Cameron, there's guys. a question um, in the chat from Hannah. Um, she said, how are you able to volunteer at the hospital? Could you, or at a hospital? Could you elaborate? Um, yeah, sure. I actually had a connection. My best friend's mom, she worked at the Long Beach Veterans Hospital, but they accept random um, volunteers, at least I knew that before COVID. So um, the Veterans Hospital in Long Beach, they have a whole building just for volunteers. So you could easily just go there and just say, hey, where could I volunteer? And they'll point you in the right direction and they'll sign you up and get you ready. For those interested in like the medical field, I know that for with COVID-19 um, in mind, they are looking for volunteers um, to help. And as you see more of those super pod uh, COVID vaccinations pop up, um, there's one in Anaheim and one in LA, I believe right now, um, you may see that on those sites, they're going to be accepting volunteers. 
not to administer anything, but they're looking for volunteers um, to help with the, the line and crowd control or making sure that people know their information as they wait in line, um, things like that. So I don't have that exact link, but I heard that they are looking for volunteers, um, which is something in person to do. Um, so I wanted to tell you that if you are interested in the medical field. And then there is a question, are, is there any places that they, they can volunteer interested in the biotech field? I don't personally um, know, but that is a good question. And yes, Irini, you can type in your question. Um, so in the biotech field, Simi or Josh, are you aware of any volunteer opportunities? Biotech? Oh, not off the top of my head, no. Uh, I'd have to research that myself. Yeah, that, that is a good point, researching. You guys can research um, a really good Google search sometimes helps and, and finding, going to a biotech company that you're interested in, like Cameron was saying, starting there, walk in the door, call the company and ask them, are they aware of any volunteer opportunities um, or internship opportunities or just learning in, in opportunities in general? Um, if that's the field you want to go into, reach out to those companies directly. It does not hurt to ask. Get your name out there. Um, there are some more questions. Uh, where can I get the most volunteer credit? How much is needed mm. now? 20 out, 40 hours for school minimum? I know they waived it this year because of the pandemic, but for me, the most of my hours came from the La Palma Volunteer Program. I did 200 hours each summer. It was super fun. And they also gave you a little bit of money at the end. So it was fun. Yeah, you're, you know, uh, most of you um, were coming from, I don't know what city you guys live in exactly. There's a couple of surrounding cities for the schools around here, but city of Cyprus, um, counselor and training program in the summer and the city of La Palma volunteer program in the summer. You'll definitely get a lot of hours. Volunteer is a lot of hours. You do have to be a La Palma resident for that one. And then for the CIT program, you do have to be a city of Cyprus um, resident. Um, so you have to live in that city, but um, whatever city you do live in, that's the city you should reach out to for opportunities, not only in recreation, there may be opportunities in other departments. So if you wanna go into city engineering or into engineering in general, we have an engineering department and maybe there's a, a way that you can volunteer and just gain information by being in the environment. So it's a lot of it is that being bold, ask the question, um, let me see if there's, I feel like there was another. Cameron, thank you for adding just serve in there. Saisha, still having trouble. Okay, so Saisha's so having um, trouble choosing the career to pursue. Totally normal, <laughs> don't worry. Um, let's see, are there any ways where I can explore more about different jobs, like through the internet? can't think of any hobbies. So I would have to say that ex looking through the internet to explore is, is definitely the way to go. Um, and reaching out to anything that, any companies that interest you, ask your parents, make connections in class, see if the more connections you make, you may find that you can find someone that ha knows someone in that industry. Um, you know, we are now your resource, City of Cyprus and Lampama. Reach out to us at any time. You have our emails um, or because you signed up and sent your email to us. So, and at the end of this, um, we will do a wrap up and make sure that you have our emails. We're happy to, to help with that. Your school counselors as well are always, uh, we work closely with the counselors as well to try to get information to the, the schools and um, they're a good resource for you as well uh, when thinking about a career. Um, let's see, I think 
that might be the last question. Was there any other questions or any other comments, um, Cameron, on your, your wrap up here? Um, no, if you guys don't have any questions for me, I'm all done. All right. Um, and I will say thank you so much, Cameron, for that. Um, oh, somebody, sorry, in the chat I'm reading. Um, she, somebody is asking to, I can't see who this is, sorry. Is it Saisha? Wanted to elaborate. Sorry, it's directly to me, so you guys can't see it. Wants to elaborate quickly on creating a slideshow. I, we did not talk about creating a slideshow. Um, maybe rephrase your question and maybe I'm misunderstanding Seisha. But um, I wanted to let, make sure you guys know that list of um, volunteering. And like Cameron said, it is, gonna, it is difficult right now to get those volunteer hours because of COVID. Technically, under the current guidelines, there's certain areas that cannot utilize volunteers because of COVID guidelines for the state. Um, but we, you know, there's different ways around that by virtually volunteering. So um, any place that had a volunteer before might have a virtual version of that, such as the Youth Action Committee, Volunteers in the Summer, um, through La Palma, there's, there's virtual ways to, to still make those connections and still hopefully make an impact on your community or um, hear more or learn as you go. Uh, volunteering is very important, um, but finding volunteer opportunities right now, we understand is difficult. There are some virtual ones. There's virtual tut tutoring I've heard. The hospitals sometimes are accepting um, like this holiday, they were accepting volunteers to submit um, holiday cards. So for the holiday Val Valentine's Day this weekend, people are making cards and submitting them to hospitals. And the time that you spend creating those cards is volunteer hours. So there's creative ways to help. Um, senior centers would love, uh, we have a senior center in Cyprus and we would love to receive cards, letters, reach out to us, be creative and look for those volunteer opportunities. Um, and if I could say, uh, since I have you guys on uh, here, um, most likely something like the city of La Palma won't be having a volunteer program, uh, but we're trying to put together something virtual similar to what we did last year. And since it is virtual, it'll be open to everyone and not just La Palma residents. So um, it, it won't be the usual 200 hours, but it'll definitely be more than two hours type of thing. So that way, you know, you can show uh, your future employer or future college applications or whoever it may be that although, you know, the pandemic is going on, you still kind of find, found a way to, to somewhat volunteer and get some type of volunteer hours in. Uh, once all that gets finalized, I have no problem uh, emailing you guys the, the flyers and applications and the processes. And again, you don't have to be a resident this time because it is virtual. Oh. Yes, that's good to know. That is good to know. All right, I think that wraps it up for our volunteering um, session. So, Simi, you want to take it away with the next one? Uh, yes. Hey everyone, how y'all doing? Hope everyone's doing fine. Uh, my name is Dr. Professor Josh Quarles. And just kidding, I don't have any of those uh, qualifications, so don't tell anybody that. Uh, but I am Josh Quarles, and I'm just going to be presenting to you guys today on how to get and keep your job. A little bit about myself. I've had about nine different jobs, I wanna say. So if there's one thing I do know how to do, 
it's get an interview and how to do well in the interview. And I went to Cerritos High School and I went to Cypress College to do film for a little bit. So it's a little bit about me. But anyway, going back into this presentation. Nice. Uh, we're, this is what we're gonna be covering today. Interviewing, preparation, interviewing tips and tricks, and you have your new job, now what? So I expect everyone to take awesome copious notes, big old stack of notes, write down your questions. So at the end, you guys can ask me appropriate questions. I talk fast and I talk a little loud and it's because that's how I talk. No other reason, I'm not nervous or anything like that. So getting into it, man. Uh, so Mr. Josh, I have an interview coming up. How do I prep for that interview? I'm glad you asked me that. Interview preparation, the first thing you could do is research the establishment. Does the establishment have any upcoming projects or events? Why that's important, it's, uh, I could take my, oh, thank God. Um, I took my mask off. Um, yeah, does the establishment have any upcoming projects or events? That's important because it's something that you can flex during your actual interview. If you are going to an interview and you've actually attended some events or you've been around the facility, your job is going to want to know that. They're going to want to know that you want to work there. So, for example, if at La Palma, I went to the Halloween event, I have an interview for La Palma and I say, oh, I went to your Halloween event last year. It was fantastic. Staff was great. They helped out a lot. It was well run. It's a, a, an amazing place to work at. I want to work here. That's going to look good to your interviewer. So they're going to look at that and be like, oh, man, this guy, he's already been here. He kind of knows what's going on. I like that possible candidate to work here. Uh, be prepared to answer questions about why you apply to the establishment and things to consider during your research. What are current and former employees saying about the establishment? Uh, one reason why you want to look into that is you kind of want to know what you're going into. Uh, if it's a fast paced environment, you want to know what that's about. And maybe you don't work well in fast paced environments. I know I work better in slower paced environments. I'm not a fast dude. I'm not quick on my feet. I don't like all that. So I look for jobs that are a little bit slower paced. I can adapt. I'm an adaptable dude. But anyway. Uh, and vice versa, you might think slow pace is really slow. I don't like that. It's boring. Time goes by slow. So you might want to look into going into a fast paced work environment. So you just kind of want to know uh, what you're going into by talking to the employees, friends that have worked there or volunteered there and all that good stuff. Moving on. Wow. Mr. Josh, what are they gonna ask me during the interview? I'm glad y'all asked me that, man. One thing you can do is practice answering the most common interview questions. So I got it all up here on the screen. First one is, tell me about yourself. Your interviewer does not want to hear you talk about how you like the long walks on the beach or how you like to go bowling on Wednesdays with Keisha in there. They don't wanna hear that. They wanna know about you, how it, pertains to the job that you are applying for. One way that you can do that, introduce yourself, obviously, say a little bit of what you do, and then slide it into something like, say, for instance, I'm applying to a childcare job. I'm going to say, oh, yeah, um, I go to such and such school, and I also babysit my six-year-old cousin from time to time. I pick him up from school. I take him home from school. We play around for a little bit. We do homework. And if he has questions, I help him the best I can with his questions. And if he gets off task, I put him right back there on task. Your interviewer is going to be like, oh, wow, that is exactly what you're going to be doing here at this job. I'm glad you brought that up in that question. Tell me about yourself. I hope you do well in the rest of this interview. So say something that is kind of along the lines of what you're going to be applying for. Another question they might ask you is, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Do you want to say a real weakness? Think about that for a second. Seconds up, yes, you do. You want to say a real weakness. Let me tell you why. I made that mistake because I listened to an old boss of mine. I went to work or interview at um, Cream Street on South Street and Cerritos back when I was in life. 
18. Yeah, yeah. Back when I was around 18 and I stumbled upon, upon this question, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Obviously, I'm going to say my strengths, right? I want to flex, make myself look good. Weakness came up. I said, oh, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. Weaknesses, I got none. Say an actual weakness. So what my boss said to me was, bro, just say what I said. And I was like, what you say, boss? And he said, I say my biggest weakness is that I work too hard. It, it answers the question. And at the same time, it makes you look good. So I'm like, all right, bet. So fast forward in life, I go to this other interview because I'm trying to pick up a second job. I work a lot, like I said. Um, and they asked me that question and I'm ready, right? So I'm like, all right, bet. Um, what are my strengths and weaknesses? I say, what's my weaknesses? I look the guy right in the eye. I'm like, bro, my weakness is that I work too hard. And then he looks at me like, I'm crazy. And he says, yo, I don't know if I can write that down. So I'm going to write down instead, your biggest weakness is that you have trouble adapting to new situations. And I was hot. I was a little, I was, I was a little, little bitter about that. I was like, man, you know, my old boss messed me up. But I learned from that experience to say an actual weakness, because sometimes if you don't say an actual weakness, your interviewer is going to give one for you. Not all the time, but sometimes it happens. So one thing you can do to improve yourself is say an actual weakness, but say what you are doing to improve upon that weakness or that you already have a plan in place. So um, I worked at TGI Fridays for a little bit. I was at the host and sometimes we take orders in the front. I'm the kind of guy that if I take your order in the front, I walk to the back, I forgot what you ordered. I need nothing else in between. It takes five seconds for me to get there. I forget a lot. So I, knowing that information, I write things down. It's what I do. It's what I plan knowing that I have to memorize things. Um, ooh. Another thing that my guests tell it, and it, this one gets asked. Tell me about a time you worked with someone you did not like. There's going to be drama or some sort of beef within your workplace from time to time. Eight out of 10 times, it's going to happen. If you put a bunch of people together, they form cliques. People might date other people, which I don't suggest. And just beef happens off of someone not saying hi to you when they walk in. I've seen it happen. It's, it's you know, not fun. So they're going to want to see how you move or what your process of thinking is during these situations. Um, what? Oh. For example, I love most human beings. It's uh, hard for me to find someone I don't do not like at all. I, I love most humans. However, there was this one time where I was working with a coworker and she didn't like me, I didn't like her, everybody knew it. But the thing is, I'm a pro. I come to my job, I'm professional. If she says hi to me, I say hi right back to her. I don't say anything to put or add more fuel into the flames, that's it. I know it's not personal other than what happens or the incident that happens and I just go about and do my job. You don't have to do more. Don't have to do no less, just be a pro. And why should we hire you? This is your last and final opportunity to, uh, to sell yourself to the interviewer. Why would I be useful? Am I dependable? Do I show up on time? Can I communicate well? All those things are actually really excellent things to say uh, because sometimes people don't you know, do all those things. If you can go above and beyond, say certain ways that you can, but don't just say, I need the money. Obviously you're gonna need the money when you're applying for a job, we all do get it. But they want to kind of see what is gonna make you stay around longer and why you would try to work better in that work environment, not just because, oh, I need the money. Oh, I'm just here just you know to collect a paycheck. It's deeper than that. And that's kind of what they're looking for a little bit. Do's and don'ts to interview. Um, first things first, when you come to an interview, right, you book it. Not everyone books an interview. So you're getting ready, you pull up, dress and press. It's gonna be the first thing you see, your interviewers see at least. 
If you pull up and you're in slides, sweats, and a regular t-shirt, clothes aren't iron, look like you just picked your shirt out from your pocket, it doesn't set a good first impression. It show, says a lot about yourself and it says a lot that, not a lot, it says kind of that you don't respect the people that you are coming in to meet, essentially, without saying anything. Make eye contact with everyone in the room. It's a tough thing. It's kind of uncomfortable. I get it. I try to work on it all the time. Practice doing that with your friends because it shows confidence. It shows that, you know, you can hold a conversation. If you're just out there and you're looking at the ground, it's not cool, man. They're not, they're not really going to hire you off that. So kind of every now and then you catch yourself looking at the ground. Oh, man, I'm at the ground. Let me look up. There I am. And, you know, it looks a lot better. They, we understand everyone's human you're gonna make these mistakes. So just try to work on that family, friends, peers, grandma, a parole officer, anybody like that. <laughs> um, be sure to speak loudly and clearly. People wanna know that you can communicate effectively and you know they can hear you and all that good stuff. You know, no one wants to hear a mumble person at the end of the day. If you're doing like this, no one's going to really want to pay attention to you or listen to you. One thing that can help you at least speak clearly is um, focus on trying to say all the letters in the word. It's annoying, but it helps you not speed through everything. I try, I try to do it myself. It helps you not speed through everything and, you know, make sure people can understand you. And another thing you want to do is be prepared. Be prepared the best you can. It makes you a little less nervous going into it. You're still going to get nervous. It's a natural thing to be nervous. We get it, you know? So, but if you're prepared, like if you do these interview questions, at least it'll kind of take some of the pressure away and you should be straight. Uh, don't kind of, you know, address that in the deuce. Don't dress casual. Don't not acknowledge the interview and panel because sometimes more than one person is going to interview you at the same time. So don't not look at everybody or not address everyone. Don't be like, hey, to only one person, only speak to that person is rude. Say hi to everyone, address everyone, look at everybody and all that good stuff. Uh, don't whisper and mumble. Like we said, it's a confidence thing. So you kind of just want to be heard and make sure people hear you. And don't make things up. Don't cap. If you don't know how to do something, don't say, don't lie and say you know how to do that, man. That's a, that's not a cool thing to do for childcare jobs. I worked a day, at a daycare for five years, and at childcare jobs, they're gonna ask you if you're CPR qualified. That's a thing that you know you're required to when you're working with children. Don't lie and say you are. Don't lie and be like, yeah, I am CPR qualified. You know, matter of fact, I saved the baby last week. It was crazy. I got an award. Don't do all that. That's um, unnecessary, it's unsafe. It, and you know, you could get caught up later um, on down the line. So odds are, you know, it's a, you might panic when something like that and you're not prepared. Uh, should I say yes, should I say no? Does it mean I'm not gonna get the job? I'm just gonna say yes, don't do that. Just say no, because odds are they're going to train you for that. They're gonna, it's just a checklist, something off a checklist that, oh, this person's not CPR qualified, we'll get them CPR qualified, you know? If you're working for a food job, a food handler's permit is what they're going to ask about. If you don't have one, they'll put you on one or say, how do I get that? That also looks better. It shows a little more initiative. But yeah, don't, don't be out there capping, man. Don't lie. And there's some um, uh, ways to dress right there. Take a look. It's fine. Put it together. Uh, Moving on, star method for interviewing questions. You could use this a lot just for storytelling in general, but the star method is used for behavioral and interview questions. Uh, it's all those questions that tell me about a time when, what do you do when, have you ever, describe A, all those questions that kind of require you to tell a little bit of story. Um, this is kind of breaks down how you do it. So starting off real quick, simple, star. You know what I'm saying? So S-T-A-R-S, situation. Explain what was happening at the time. You're basically setting the scene for your example. T, task. In that situation, what were you responsible for? 
A, the action. This is where you would give an explanation as to what you did, not the team, not somebody that was with you. Talk a little bit about them, but remember at the end of the day, you're the one being interviewed. They want to know about you. Don't get lost in the sauce. Talk about yourself a little bit. And then R, result. Huge thing, man. Have a result. A lot of people like myself, I normally will have a beginning and a middle. I don't have an end. My end will be something like, and yeah. You know, I probably said I probably said it like two or three times today. So just kind of make sure you work on that skill, having a result, having an ending to your story. Super important. And yeah. Uh, what about Zoom interviews? So in this day and age, uh, you're probably not going to have too many in-person interviews. So these are like some nice little Zoom etiquette tips and just tricks to make that process a little bit easier. Use the mute button. Look into the camera while speaking. I haven't been doing that. I ain't going to lie. Uh, choose a professional background. Try not to stay away or try to stay away from things that are controversial or uh, could be too distracting. Something plain, simple, and uh, professional. Don't, if you have a really messy background or something like that, try to use it. But if you don't have to, don't feel like you need to. Just a blank wall is fine. Find a brightly lit room. No one wants to see shadows. It's just not as cool to look at. Uh, pick a quiet space. You know, I know it's hard in certain households or homes to find a quiet spot. A lot of times, totally being 110% real, the only quiet place in my house is the closet. So I, I have a walk-in closet. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not in there crazy. There's a light switch and everything. So turn on the light pick the blank side of the wall and boom, there I go. There I go. No one even knows that I'm in a closet until of course I turn or something like that. So don't make that mistake. Uh, silence your phone. It's kind of unprofessional to have your phone on. Easy to forget when you're in the comfort of your home and everything, but try to remember, silence your phone. Uh, you want to have it on in class. Don't have it on when you're doing an interview. Um, maintain your focus. Tough. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> You know, you're behind a screen. It's not in person. It's a little bit tougher to uh, stay focused. A bunch of things going on in your room. Some of y'all are probably playing 2K or something right now. You know, it's it's hard to do, but try to stay focused and give the proper respect to the person that's giving you an interview and a, a possible job in the future. Turn off notifications. Use a laptop or computer. Really recommended. Uh, if you don't, it's fine. Just because, you know, when you get calls and stuff, it could possibly interrupt your connection and all that on your phone. But if you have to use your phone, use your phone. You know, use what you got. Uh, charge your laptop. Don't come to a Zoom interview with your laptop on 2% struggling. You know, it just shows that you're not really ready, especially, oh, what happened to this person? All right. Under the rug, you know, just little to no excuses on why not to hire you. So charge your laptop, make sure you're ready to go. Update your computer. You don't want nothing to shut down and update while you're interviewing. That's gonna be kind of, kind of, you know, just ugly to have. Find a good internet connection. Tip and trick that I have about this, ask your interviewer ahead of time, at the beginning of the interview, what a backup number is just in case your, your Wi-Fi connection goes off or it logs you out. I'm gonna say it one more time. One tip is at the beginning of the interview, ask for a callback number in case your internet connection is garbage. So it shows that you already kind of had a plan in place and you know, possibility that this you know, didn't go right and that you took initiative and you, know, you asked. Asking questions stops a lot of people from, um, the fear of asking questions stops a lot of people from asking those questions and knowing the right answers and then just looking you know, confused altogether. So ask them for a backup number to call and then you're just doing a phone interview, easy peasy. Communicate with your household, let everyone in the, in the house know, hey, I got a really important interview uh, with Google at like 8 a.m. Don't come into the room. Don't ask me to do these chores. It's, uh, you know, you, you don't want to fight with your mom while you're having like an important interview with somebody. You know, she comes in, boom, boom, boom. Why haven't you taken out the trash? Mom, I'm doing an interview. 
why do you need to know? You don't want to do all that. So just try to let them know ahead of time, communicate with your family and wear professional attire. So even though you're at home, please look nice, iron your clothes. It's a big thing for me to iron your clothes. It looks really ugly when it's just all wrinkled, man. People can see, like, as a high schooler, I didn't think people could know, like, knew if my shirt was ironed or not. It's embarrassing looking back at pictures now. So it's just iron your clothes. Uh, make sure you're wearing tops and bottoms. So, yeah, wear pants. Don't wear shorts or your drawers or nothing like that. Make sure you're fully ready to go. And in that interview headspace, uh, keep your screen clear. No distractions if there's not, if you don't need to have them. Practice using Zoom. I'm like mentally old, so I don't really know how to use Zoom that well. It would have been really good for me to take some time beforehand to practice uh, using Zoom navigating because you don't want to stumble up when something goes wrong. So just kind of get used to using Zoom because you just don't want to stumble and fumble around if you don't need to. Try to take that time when you can. Uh, use appropriate body language. Don't be out there slouching, looking like you're not listening. Head in your hands, nothing like that. Kind of look like you're attentive and ready to go. Ask your interviewer questions. It shows that you were paying attention, man. Ask questions, dog. Like, um, it does a little more than just saying, like, nodding your head and saying yes. You know, if you asked a question, you were inquiring about something, you were wondering. It's good for both people. Oh, somebody's listening and he wants to know more. So ask questions when you can um, about appropriate things, you know, that's relating to the topic. And boom next slide so you aced your interview awesome bro good for you you have your new job now what how do you keep it that's an excellent question i'm glad you asked me that question so to keep a job you're gonna want to maintain and have just a certain amount of professionalism in other words one big thing is come to work ready to work you know what I'm saying? Like, don't come to work. Like, on certain days, you're going to have slow, kind of quiet days, like, especially at restaurants. You're going to have dead times where you're not doing anything. Don't be surprised when your boss comes up to you and tells you to work. That's Listen to what your boss says, man. You're, you got hired to work. So some days you might be feeling lazy. You're not being not. Huh? Oh. That's not. <laughs> you might be uh yeah not be feeling it that day for whatever reason we're all human but just stay professional no come into it leaving your business or your drama at the door when you come into work you gotta work so be aware of clicks like i said earlier clicks kind of happen they form just know who goes where and that drama falls along with that so if you see people forming like little groups they hang out outside of work this and that it's gonna get a little messy just kind of try to stay professional the best you can doesn't always happen sometimes it's really cool but again don't be surprised if it do happen uh cool when you're new all eyes are on you so it's <laughs> that rhymes. um it's not a bad thing like you're boss or your supervisor, once you start working, they're going to check up on you. They're going to say, oh, how so-and-so doing? Or how do you feel working here? Is there anything that's unclear? And not only with you, they're going to ask your coworkers. When you come in, they're going to be like, oh, how is so-and-so adjusting? And if you're not doing well, not to make anybody nervous, but if you're not doing well, they're going to say something. They're going to be like, oh, man, you know, he's not working. He has a big attitude. He tries to tell me off. I try to tell him to help me out with this and he don't want to do it. So they're going to say something. So just kind of know that, you know, you're being watched, not in a bad way. Again, they just want to know that you're working well with the rest of everybody. And I'll, oh, dang, hold on, pause. Don't, don't ask questions yet. I'm not done. I still got a couple more things. I, I sped through it. Um, again, there's, it's important to ask questions. 
know what you're supposed to be doing. If you're new, everybody knows that you're new and they're gonna know that, hey man, he's not gonna know how to do everything. When I'm new at a lot of places, especially when I was younger, I didn't ask anybody questions because I didn't wanna look dumb. It's really bad and it looks bad when you're five months into your job and you don't know how to do something you should have known five days into your job. I'm gonna say it one more time for my dudes in the back. It's really important to ask questions because you don't wanna be the guy five months into your job not knowing how to do something you should have known after five days into your job. It makes you hard to work with, makes everybody else work twice as hard, pick up your slack, and they kind of don't understand why you don't know how to do that. And it's because you didn't ask questions. So don't be afraid to ask questions and know what you're gonna be doing. If you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, just ask somebody, ask your supervisor, coworker, coworker before the supervisor, hey, am I doing this right? Or hey, is there anything that you need help with? Or hey, is there something that I need to do? It sends a message to the people that you're working with. Oh, this person wants to work and he's looking for things to do. He's not a slacker. Good for him. I'm going to dap him up later on. So just ask questions. If you don't understand something, feel free to ask. Everyone's been asking questions so far throughout the presentation. So good for y'all. And um, last but not least, own up to your mistakes and be accountable. If you mess up on something, say you messed up, man. It's okay, we all mess up. It's better than getting caught up later on for um, something everyone knows you did. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, we all know that was him. And he's not saying it's him and we got it on camera. It's like, bro, we caught you in 4K dropping boxes. That's you. So just say it's you, own up to your mistakes, apologize and say that you're gonna do better next time or you won't make that mistake again. Uh, just hold yourself accountable. Okay, now any questions? That's a, uh, yeah, now I'm done. Thanks guys for going through it. Appreciate y'all. I could do what? All right, everyone, feel free to ask any questions of Josh here in the chat box or verbally, you can also unmute yourself. Fantastic job, Josh. Thanks. Lots of good takeaways. Hopefully you guys were screenshotting some of those slides. Otherwise, um, like I said, this is recorded so you can cross-reference later. Um, any questions for Josh? I have a question. What's up? Do you have any tips like, for giving your resume? Do you just say like, oh, hi, I'm Cameron, here's my resume, or do you wait until they ask for it? I've never really heard anything like on this. I was just wondering. Uh, for me, I kind of, with resumes, I send my resume beforehand, and then I also just bring a copy to the interview. If they ask me for my resume, I got it there, but they kind of should have it on deck when I apply for the job. That's how I just, that's how I do it. I think that's a good good rule of thumb. Make sure to submit it in advance. And if you bring a resume, depending on the position that you're applying for, they may not need to see a copy of it right in front of them. So, um, or they've already reviewed that. But if you have it, that's better than them saying, oh, did you bring your resume and you don't have it? So being prepared. Yeah. For sure. Any uh, other questions? I have a question for Josh. Thanks, Simi. All right, Simi. All right, Josh. So um, do you have any tips? Like, you know, you said everyone gets nervous for an interview. I know I get nervous for stuff like this, interviews, you know, normal everyday things. Do you have any personal tips that you use uh, to kind of help out with that? Uh, just prep the best you can. And what I did literally before I came today, I kind of practiced with my mom standing in front of somebody, my mom and my dog, Kenai. So it's, uh, you know, try to practice saying it in front of people. Uh, it's different when you kind of got eyes on you and instead of doing it in the mirror, but even doing it in the mirror kind of helps out a lot. So yeah, just, uh, you know, talk to somebody, get your homies together. Do it for them. Prep, lots of prep. 
Also, start in the mirror if you really can't handle a person. <laughs> yeah, start in the mirror, man. No shame in it. So. Uh, can I give a quick tip for, I know it's, it's like now we're in the, the age of Zoom. Uh, one thing that I read online somewhere was that a good thing to do is to record yourself like interviewing, like prep interviewing. So that way you can see how you're doing and you can adjust it that way. So quick tip on yeah. interviews. Yeah, that's a good tip. And like Josh said that, you know, when you're interviewing on Zoom, that you should be like talking to the camera because most of us probably like right now, I just like, I'm looking at each one of your faces. I look at myself um, and you can see where my eyes are. And right, if I'm talking directly to the camera, then you, then you, they see you, they see your actual expression um, it's really important to really look at the camera and just something that I have not had to do a Zoom interview just yet. Um, they have been phone call and I was on the panel. Um, so for me, I, that would be something I would definitely need to train on. And Simi, that's an, a great idea to tape yourself or to record it so that you can see how many times do you look at yourself? <laughs> do you look at, you know, other things? So with nerves, the more you practice too, the better. So awesome tip there. All right. I see there's no questions in the chat. Any last minute comments or questions from any of our attendees? Awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to um, thank you all for being here today. Thank you to our presenters, Lauren, Josh, Cameron, awesome job we really hope that you have some things to take away from this event um we have your emails and we will send you information for our next workshop which is um coming up here actually in march it's coming up really soon and that one is actually going to be um the speakers of the panel will be college athletes and how they rise to the top during these covid times so um that one is coming up in march we'll send you the information Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, we hope to see you at the next workshop. Thank you. Thank you guys. See you at the next one. Bye. Hmm.